Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Hacks and Hacks Slitchel tutorial series. Today we're looking at an optional part, and we're going to be looking at configuring the Visual Studio Code Editor as our development platform of choice. Now, this isn't the only option when working with Hacks. It's just probably my personal favorite. There are other options. You can use whatever text editor you want. You can get syntax highlighting and coloring in Sublime Text, for example. And one of the most popular development environments for Hacks previously um, was Hacks Develop, which is also uh, Flash develop. There's two versions of the same thing. Unfortunately, those ones are Windows only. Probably the best environment for integrated de debugging. Uh, it's a great choice if you don't want to go this route and if you're running Windows only. Another option is the IntelliJ um, Java editor. You can actually install Hacks language extensions and have a full blown development environment there as well. But I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code for the rest of this tutorial series. It happens to be my favorite code editor right now. It's completely free, it's available on Windows, Mac, and iOS. And it also seems to be the platform of choice for Hacks developers these days. So the tooling for it seems to be updated very well. And it seems to be sort of a first class citizen for how you edit your code. Again, you don't have to, but it's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial series. So if you want to follow along directly and you haven't already in installed and configured Visual Studio Code, that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to install Visual Studio Code. We're going to get it configured for Hacks language development. And then we're going to show you how you can actually run your code from directly within Visual Studio Code. Now, keep in mind, Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio are not the same thing. They just share some branding. Visual Studio Code is a lightweight cross-platform code editor. Visual Studio is a fat, big, full-blown development environment. Two different things. One is Windows only, and the Visual Studio Code we were talking about today, as I said just a moment ago, is nicely cross-platform. Now, come on over to the page to download it. It's code.visualstudio.com. Now, if you lose me, if I lose you at any point in this, don't worry. I actually have a text-based version of this tutorial available for you. So for you know any kind of reference that you need, I'll link it down below. So the URL I just mentioned, etc., will all be available elsewhere. Okay, so go code.visualstudio.com and click the download link. It should automatically pick up whatever platform you are using. Just click that and let it go ahead and download. It's about a 30 meg download right now. Don't worry too much about version. Uh, the nice thing about Visual Studio Code is it has an auto updater built into it. So you can, you'll automatically grab whatever the newest version is. I'll go ahead and save that, and then when it's done, run it. So as I said, it's about 30 megs. It should only take a couple seconds to go ahead and download. As you can see, it's coming down now. 10 seconds remaining. All right. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and install it. This brings up a pretty standard Windows installer. Nothing really magical going on here. Accept the agreement. Pick your installation location of choice. Click Next. Takes up about 140 megs, as you can see. Yeah, let's install it there. Click Next. Uh, now you've got a couple of options here. You can have it create a desktop icon. I hate things on my desktop, so I'm going to say no. It will automatically create a start menu entry, so don't worry about that one. I do like these two, though. They're explorer extensions, allow you to right-click on a file or a directory and have it open up in Visual Studio Code. Since I'm using this as my primary editor, uh, I use these and I enable this. If you're not one of those people that wants right-click menu clutter in Windows Explorer, then do not select this, uh, but I love it. Another one here is Add to Path. This one's really kind of cool because it allows you to use the code editor uh, directly from the command line. Um, and I use this a lot, so be sure to add that in. Now, if you're using an earlier version of Windows, Windows 7 or earlier, you are going to have to reboot after this install to get this to, to actually take. Uh, otherwise, you just need to make sure that your command window is open after the install process. We'll see this in a second. All right, so that should be it. Go ahead and install. It'll take just a few seconds. It's a pretty simple install. Now, hopefully I'm not going to run into any issues here. What I've done is I've just recently uninstalled my own copy of Visual Studio so I can run through this again. So I might have some droppings and drippings around from my previous install, but I really hope I don't. So I hope I give you an honest view of what the installation process is like. Uh, we'll just give this a couple more seconds. All right, it's done. Click finish. It will automatically fire up a copy of Visual Studio Code like so. I have uh, zoomed the hell out of it so you can nicely see what's going on here. I'll unzoom it a bit. All right, so as you can see here, it's actually opened up a previous Hacks project and there's no syntax coloring or highlighting or anything, and that's not what we want. Um, we want to actually have direct support for the Hacks language in Visual Studio Code. But thankfully, this is very easy to add. Come over here and click this guy, Extensions. It'll pop out this window, and we're just going to filter down for Hacks. There we go. 
Hacks Language Support 1.4 version and just click install. So that's what you're looking for is Hacks 1.4.0 or whatever the current version of that is. And this is basically installing Hacks Language Support into uh, Visual Studio Code. So look over here, see how there's no syntax highlighting, nothing else going on. Give it a second. Now, of course, this assumes you've already installed the hacks tools and all that stuff. If you haven't, do make sure you do that first. Previous tutorial covered how to get your hacks development environment up and running. Make sure you do that before you do this. Uh, okay, so it is now installed. You'll notice this button just switched to reload. This basically restarts the IDE with the extension you just installed enable. And we can go ahead and reload that guy. Reload the window. And ta-da, now you notice something going on over here. We have full syntax highlighting. Now we have a bunch of other stuff. It's very cool. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So now you see if I come down into this code here, sprite dot, and we can get syntax suggestions, etc., for that particular package. So uh, we get code completion. Um, and let's get rid of that because I actually don't want to do that. So you have a full editing environment here. We have a project open up. Now I'm gonna actually show you how to open up a project from the command line instead of this. So we're gonna shut this guy down and we're gonna instead fire up a command line and there we go. So this is where I previously, at the end of the last tutorial, I created a new um, Flixel project here. Remember uh, it was Flixel-TPL or flixel n or tpl dash sorry tpl dash n name is the process to create the project that we've created here and this actually has if we look in this folder there's a dot xml file and there's a dot visual studio code so it knows that this is a project for um, flixel development inside of visual studio code so now if we did that path option during the install we can actually use code from the command line using the word code now what it wants as a parameter is the directory that your project is in. All Visual Studio Code projects are directory based. And we're just gonna say use the current one or dot. And then press enter. And this is gonna fire up our project uh, twice. And I don't get why it does this. So let's, let's don't save you. It brings up the old version as well. Uh, so yeah, don't need any extensions right now. Here is the project that was created. You can see if you come in here to source, this is where our default created project for us is. So let's go to main. You can see here we do have um, syntax highlighting and everything else going on. Now we're just gonna look at actually how to run this code from within Visual Studio. And everything in Visual Studio is done via the palette. Uh, now I'll explain exactly what that means in a second. So we go here to See up here at this top, this acronym. So it's got Control Shift P or Command Shift P on Mac. Uh, I think Control Shift P on Linux as well. And this guy, if you do that key combination or you pick it right there, it brings up this command list. And this is where you can run your code. So what we can do is just type run task. So you see here we've got run build task as our first option. Or we could use the command shown over here. You can see Control Shift B would bring us to the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and run that command. So run command task. And this is automatically gonna build it for the first platform that we chose. Give this a second. And boom, it just ran our code. Now our code doesn't actually do anything, so it's not that exciting. But at the same time, we could have also come in here and gone Command Shift P and run task like so. I pick that one. And now you can see all of the various different targets that are supported by, or the different commands that can be run using hacks here. Uh, we could run any one of those commands. So if we wanted to do, um, you know, an Android debug build, a CPP debug build, a Flash debug, HTML5 debug, or release iOS, Nico. All the different platforms and targets are available here. So you just basically go to that run task and then pick the one you want to target. And again, that gets old quick. So you can automatically do the last one you did with command or control, shift, and B. And you'll see down here that it's building for the Flash target in this particular case. That will run and finish. And there is our game, our default game. Nothing too exciting going on because there's nothing really happening yet. Now that default target can actually be determined using that JSON file in here. So remember when we created our project, the template, we said create this for Visual Studio Code. Well, if we come into the Visual Studio Code, the .vs code folder, that dot might cause it to be hidden unless you have show hidden turned on on your computer, by the way. Um, come on down here and take a look for the file tasks.json. 
And you'll see here, this is where it's pulling all those things from. So you can see the task of flash release, flash debug, uh, flash debug uh, build only, HTML5 release, etc. This is where they were all being set. And the key thing you want to look for, for the control shift B, for what the default one is going to be, is the one that has, and I think default is flash debug. So I'll show you. Ah, flash debug. And you see, is build command true? So for example, you wanted to make C++ debug your default. Um, you would remove that, or you would set that to false there. And you just go on down and find uh, control F, CPP, uh, debug right here. And you would set the command then uh, as, you know, build uh, is build command true. And so now this would make it when I do control shift B that the CPP debug is the default build process. Because you're going to find uh, command shift P or com yeah, command shift P. Uh, run task, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. It gets old very fast. So you're going to want to set your default build target. Um, and really, that's about it for now. Later on, we'll look at some uh, debugging, setting breakpoints, etc. But this is you up and running. Uh, you should be good to go from this point on. As you can see, the integration directly into uh, Visual Studio Code is quite nice. And I do love this editor. If you've never checked it out, now is a good time. It's a great little editor. All right, so that's it. Next step, we're going to be jumping into um, more code directly into you know your first Hello World application, make things a little bit more interesting. But now we have our programming environment set up. We have our programming languages set up. Let's continue on. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click like. If you're not already subscribed, uh, please subscribe if this sounds interesting to you. That's it for now. See you all later. Goodbye.